Hey everyone, I'm Ashley, and I'm so glad to be here as we look into the backstory of Christmas during our new series called The Kid. So I wanna tell you a really quick story. When I was growing up, the only Christmas gift that I ever wanted in life was a dollhouse, yes. I don't even really remember how old I was, but you might have thought I was too old to be wanting a dollhouse at the time, but I wanted one, I didn't care. Um, and so I remember there were actually two Christmases in a row that I wrote my list and I put dollhouse at the top, I put it on the refrigerator and I didn't get them, two years in a row. But on the third year, yes, that wonderful year, I didn't even see it coming, I didn't even expect it, but I got my lovely dollhouse. <laughs> so what about you? Have you ever had that Christmas gift that you just had to have in your mind? Even if you knew that you were gonna get it or thought maybe I won't get this. Regardless of all that, imagine someone giving you a gift, but they gave it to you like this. Hold on. This, like how would you feel if you got this gift? <laughs> Okay, does it seem like there's much thought into it? You might feel misunderstood or unimportant. What else is in here? Tissue, really? Thanks. <laughs> what would you even say about the relationship if someone gave you this gift? I mean, the truth is it's not bad, but getting this gift may not feel very personal. And if I gave this to you, you'd probably think I'm a little disconnected from who you are as a person. But what if I gave you this gift? But what about this? How would you feel if you got this gift? You might feel important or at least thought about or understood. You might feel like the gift giver truly knew you and considered your interest in what you'd actually want to get for Christmas. Let's see what's in here. It's a lava lamp. Okay, sometimes we get the gifts that we love. The kinds of gifts that tell us the person who got it for us really knows us and really cares. But other times we get the kind of gifts that feel so disconnected from who we really are, it's almost like they were meant for someone else. But if we're honest, we might even say that it's not just the gifts we get or don't get at Christmas that make us feel this way. In fact, sometimes there's something about the entire Christmas season that can make us wonder if it's really for us. I mean, think about it. If you grew up going to church, you've probably heard some version of what Christmas is supposed to be about a million times before. The baby born and placed in a manger, God who came in human form, the Savior finally arriving to rescue us for all eternity. Sure, it sounds good. Does it really do anything to change our lives? Like, does the birth of the kid thousands of years ago really mean anything for us today? Is Christmas really for you if you're tired of hearing the same old Christmas story every year, or your family is going through some changes and the holidays really feel different this year? You've recently moved and you're not sure how any of your Christmas traditions will work in your new home. Someone you love is sick or has recently passed away and you cannot imagine feeling happy this holiday. Your family is struggling financially, so you get fewer gifts than you're used to. You're questioning your faith and you're not really sure Jesus is real at all. If you've asked yourself questions like these before, trust me, you're not alone. I think we've all wondered if the gift of Jesus that everyone talks about at Christmas really means anything for us today. And the good news is we don't have to wonder anymore. Because as we'll see, no matter what your circumstances are, no matter how you're feeling this season, no matter where you are in your faith journey, the gift of Christmas has the potential to change everything for us. To show you what I mean, let's do a deep dive into some of the accounts of the events surrounding the very first Christmas. One story we'll look at took place at the same night Jesus was born, and the other story took place sometime later. To start, let's see how Luke, a man who interviewed some of Jesus' closest followers, recorded something that happened the night Jesus was born. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. That may seem like a strange place to start, but trust me, it's an important detail. A shepherd is someone who takes care of sheep. And that probably doesn't mean much to us today, but in Jesus' time, shepherds were not the most important or valued people in society. They weren't kings or leaders or anyone important. They took care of livestock all day. And that's not the cleanest job. That's what makes what happened next so interesting. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. 
and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Wow. Of all the people the angels could have delivered their message to, kings, leaders, special religious people, the angels announced the birth of the kid, Jesus, to the shepherds. The not so important shepherds became the first to hear the most important news in history. Why? Well, I like to think it was because God wanted the world to know that this gift of a savior wasn't just for some people. It was for all people because Jesus is for everyone. And that's what this encounter shows us. The kid shows us that Christmas is for everyone. You don't have to take my word for it. Let's go back to the shepherds for their response. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. Did you catch that? Before this, the shepherds knew that it was likely that others didn't think of them as valued or important. But after their encounter with the angels, these beings from heaven, it was clear that God saw them as valued and important. They knew that they were worthy of the gift that God had to give the world. No matter what anyone else thought of them, they knew they were deserving of knowing the kid. And because of that, they're a part of the story that we read every holiday season. And this isn't just true for the shepherds. God made a point to make sure everyone knew that Jesus' birth meant something for them. Look at how Matthew, one of Jesus' followers, recorded another incident sometime after Jesus' birth. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from Eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. Because Jesus is for everyone, his birth was announced to everyone. And in this account, that included both the wise men following the sign of his arrival and the most powerful person alive in the reign at the time, King Herod. What was interesting is that they responded in two totally different ways. While the wise men were thrilled at the news of the kid's arrival, King Herod was not. He was threatened by the potential power this supposed savior might have. As the wise men made their way to see the kid, King Herod made a plan to get rid of him. Let's keep reading. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. So the wise men bowed down to worship the kid because they knew his arrival was for them. Not just that, we later read that they ran from Herod to avoid letting him find Jesus. So how did King Herod respond? Like this. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Two totally different responses to the same big event, right? Well, remember, Jesus came for both. Woo. He came to be the savior of the wise men who bowed to worship him and the savior of the king who wanted him gone. Because the kid shows us that Christmas is for everyone. Now, if you're someone who believes in Jesus and wants to follow him with your life, Christmas is for you. If you're someone who doesn't believe in Jesus or isn't sure about your faith at all, Christmas is for you. If you're someone who thinks everybody sees you as unimportant, Christmas is for you. If you're someone who is anyone, Christmas is for you. That's what these accounts of the events around Jesus' arrival do. They remind us that the kid shows us that Christmas is for everyone.
So this year, as you think about Christmas, I want you to remember that no matter who you are or where you are in your faith or what you're experiencing this holiday season, Jesus is for you. Christmas is for you because Jesus is what Christmas is all about. And so with that in mind, here are three things that I want you to remember this holiday season. First, Jesus is for you. If you're already following Jesus with your life, this is a great time to reflect on how making that decision has changed your life. It's a chance to remind yourself of the gift of Jesus that God gave specifically to you. And if you're not a follower of Jesus, that's okay. Believe me when I tell you that Christmas is still for you too. Maybe this season, you could take just one step toward considering what it might mean for your life if you choose to believe that this was true for you. And second, Jesus is for others. Jesus isn't just for you or me or any one person. Jesus is for everyone. Yes, I'm talking about your best friend, your parent, your small group leader, your favorite coach, and your grandparents. But I'm also talking about the girl who leaves you out of the group chat, the sibling who annoys you, the teacher who gave you that failing grade, the step parent you aren't so sure about, and that person who took your spot on the team. Jesus is for everyone. And lastly, Jesus invites you to be for others too. Since Jesus is for everyone, then as followers of Jesus, we should be too. So this Christmas, I want you to think about what it would look like to be for the people in your life. How can you show them that Jesus and Christmas are for everyone? Maybe it's by helping your parent or guardian out at, at your home or encouraging your small group. Maybe it's inviting a new friend to church or being kind to your sibling or praying for someone that you care about. Whatever it is, take a step to remind yourself and others that Jesus is for everyone. Now, when you head to group, I want you to think about this question. What would change for you if you believe Jesus is for everyone?